Hey, what's going on guys? Brandon here with Texas Plinking, and uh, this should be a pretty anticipated video just based off the enthusiasm on the Instagram. These are the Palmetto State Armory Saber 10s, which are new, but they make quite a few different Saber 10s. But specifically, these are the ones that are inspired, we'll call it, from the uh, M110, the Knights Armament Company M110 SAS. There's a few things to talk about. The reason I have two, we'll just start with that, is uh, they chamber them in 6.5 Creedmoor and 308. This one right here being 6.5 Creedmoor, one underneath is 308. So we're gonna get some impressions with both of them. But there's a couple other offerings from that as well. These are in FTE. There's also black. There's a billet, which these are. There's also the forge. You can tell they're the billet from two main things. One, it utilizes the OG Armalite cut. So instead of it being rounded here, like most or all AR-15s and most AR-10s, the original AR, AR stands for Armalite, if you didn't know that, and the original AR was an AR-10. It was a 308 uh, or 762 by 51 well before the AR-15. Eugene Stoner developed it, and Armalite, you know, made it with that cut, the way Eugene Stoner designed it. Uh, and so since then, a lot of things took on what is now called a DPMS cut. That's how most AR-10s are. The ones that still have the Armalite cut are, of course, the M110, all Knight's Armament, actually, LaRue Tactical, and Armalite, of course, and may, there's a couple other ones, I'm sure. So Palmetto State, they can't call it a clone of an M110 because the clone people are going to say this isn't correct, that's not correct, but it's definitely inspired, so that's safe to say, and that was an attention they did there, was uh, making the Armalite cut, which I think is cool. So you can choose between forged and billet. The billet's going to have the Armalite cut and a... Um, a bolt release on the right side, like the Knight's Armament, which is pretty cool. So that's one fork in the road. The other one is, like I said, 308 or 6.5 Creedmoor, and the other one is FTE or black. Interestingly, if you choose FTE, that's what comes with the full kit and caboodle as far as three mags, uh, rail covers for Magpul, a Magpul bipod, which I'm not the biggest fan of, so I swapped uh, both of the rifles out for Harris bipods, but it comes with it. Save your equipment case and uh, I believe that's it. What's cool about the Sabre line, in my opinion, is for the most part, certainly with these two, for example, they're rifles that don't need to exist functionally. Uh, everyone knows as far as like, you know, rifles being tools, it's form follows function, but with the Sabre line, it kind of is uh, an exception in that they know what enthusiasts kind of want uh, as far as retro, it's, it's funny calling an M110 retro already, but something about you know an A1 or an A2 stock, uh, quad rails are back, baby. Stuff like that. This gun doesn't necessarily need to exist, but it does, and the result is they can't keep them in stock. A big part of that is a legit M110. Is that a rifle you, as a civilian, can buy? Yes, but it's going to set you back tens of thousands of dollars. I'm not talking 10 or even 20. I think they're well over 30, but it's hard to tell because they don't trade hands all that often. So we're talking, I don't know, 30, maybe 40,000 for a legit M110. Some people get SR25s and clone them out, so it's a little bit more correct, but they're still clones, and those are still like 20 grand. Um, these, though, are 1500 and that's the top end. That's the billet, FTE, everything, everything, 1499 okay? So it's not that bad. I think they start at 12 if you go for the forged and black and stuff like that. So that's the uh, price range. Now, not to draw a huge comparison with the legit M110, because they are just different rifles, just with some inspiration, but just real quickly, the main difference is gonna be that uh, these do not accept the Knights Armament Company over the top uh, barrel system suppressor. Uh, they simply have 20 inch barrels uh, with a one in eight twist for the 6.5 Creedmoor, one in 10 twist for the 308, and they're just threaded at the end. Five eighths by 24 standard for these calibers, and they're just threaded at the end. So they don't take that proprietary Knights, you know, latch, gate system. Another big thing is it doesn't have an adjustable length of pull. Uh, this A1 stock looks pretty correct from the distance, but uh, yeah, the Knight's Armament one has this black knob right here. By twisting it, this right here can extend out. So looks cool, but functionally, it's really, really nice to have. Um, definitely missing it on here. But in its place, you have some storage in this A1 stock. The other thing is they came out of the box with Palmetto State Armory's Sabre branded pistol grips. I got lucky. I ended up having these laying around to make it look a little bit more correct. These are A2 grips, but they're not FDE. That would have been too light for this color. They're actually like coyote brown. And those actually came off the FN Scar. They come out of the box with a two-stage trigger. It is far from the worst. Uh, I would say they're really not worth changing. They're pretty darn good. They can get better, so if you want to, drop any AR-15, AR-10 trigger uh, pack in there and it'll work. But they come with two-stage match triggers, so that's very nice. They also come with uh, Ambi, Radian charging handles as well. Something I thought was really, really cool off the gate, it is worth talking about a little bit later as we get into impressions. Five position adjustable gas system. Uh, you can't adjust it by the hand. It's a little tight 
when they're new because they still are tight and they have a flathead uh, slot right there. Impressions on that, I'm gonna have to mention. Um, having a little bit of issues at the moment, but we're just gonna dive into that as we get into the shooting. Um, and hopefully as we get shooting, they just work a little bit better. They come with ambi fire selectors, which is really nice as well. This I thought was nice. The uh, hard chrome bolt carrier group, which looks fantastic, but that definitely is done to make it look a little bit more M110-ish. Something about that color contrasting between a flat dark earth, dark, dark flat dark earth, and that hard chrome bolt. Looks very M110. That's definitely what they were going for and I appreciate that they did that here as well. Talking about some things that I added, like I said, A2 grip uh, there. The 6.5 Creedmoor comes with FDE P mags. I went ahead and just used the metal mags because it looks better as well. The 308 comes with metal mags. Not sure why they did that. Both mags work with each other. Again, like I said, the Magpul bipods, not that big of a fan of. Uh, they're not that bad, they're far from the worst, but nothing like a Harris bipod, a six to nine inch with a swivel feature. That's definitely my favorite. So I added that on both of these. Um, also, given that these are relatively economic for what they do, uh, the more, the right thing to do, I guess, that to make it a cohesive package is set it up with an economic, but still very capable optic setup. So that's what I did with the 6.5 Creedmoor, but then I went a little bit more bougie with the 308. So let's talk about both of them. The 6.5 Creedmoor, this is a fairly new optic. This is an Arkin Optic SH4J Gen 2. Stick with me here. 6 to 24 by 50. Okay, so the SH4 was like the economic of an already economic line of scopes. But the J is now Japanese, uh, Japanese glass on this SH4 lineup. 34 millimeter main tube, first focal plane, available in mills, MOA, zero reset, zero stop, a very he heavy hitting optic for the money. $399 at the moment. And at the moment, coupon code Texas Plinking takes off about a hundred bucks. So $299 for that optic. Again, that's right now with the coupon code, not sure how long it lasts, but even without the code, 400 bucks for the optic. So that's the more economic line. I don't think that optic's gonna be the limiting factor. Uh, on the other hand, here we have a Razer HD Gen 2. It's a three to 18 by 50. Love this optic. I believe it's discontinued. I can't find it on the Vortex website. That probably tells me a Gen 3 is in the works soon. Real quick, here's the two cons I had about this rifle before I even shot it at all. It's hard to say that the fact that it comes with a bipod is a con, but hear me out. The Magpul bipod is okay. I'd rather it just didn't come with a bipod and it cost a hundred bucks less, but already the price point's not bad, so whatever. Just buy it and sell the bipod for 50 bucks. So that's not the end of the world, but the I'm just weird with rifle kits. It's, uh, it's a personal choice on your accessories. Not the end of the world, it's already a fair price and they can't keep them in stock, so who am I to say? The other thing, the length of pull adjustment, if they were able to mimic that stock, that would have been so cool. Maybe they couldn't because Knight's Armament's uh, a patent or something, I don't know, won't pretend to know. Um, not only would it have looked more correct and cool, but I find myself really wanting length of pull here. Maybe I just got some really lanky arms, but I found myself putting the optic a little bit more forward than I would have really liked just because I'm, I'm on it. So length of pull would have been nice for this system, but I get around it. I just get a cantilever, push it forward a little bit, and we're fine. Those were the two little minor cons, not that they're really big cons anyway, before I shot. Here's the deal. As I was shooting it, at the moment, I'm having a little bit of hiccups, and it's all to do right here the five position adjustable gas system. Um, I can't find happy settings. This goes for both of the rifles. Uh, the 6.5 Creedmoor is having okay luck at the moment, but um, if I'm not mistaken, if you're looking kind of down at the rifle, going clockwise should start closing the gas off. So if you're gonna be adjusting the gas system on any gun and trying to tune it for your specific suppressor, your specific ammo, unsuppressed, whatever, it's good to start off by just putting one round in the mag, close the gas system, if, especially if there's only five positions, go to the most closed and shoot until it locks back. And if it doesn't lock back, open it up by one, open it up by one more, one more until you finally get locked back. And then for a little extra insurance, maybe open it up one more just to go through adverse settings and you know changes in ammo or whatever. I started off with the 308 and the short of it is this, I couldn't get enough gas blowback. Um, I was all the way closed off and it was closed off. It was not even spitting the casing out. As I started to open up the gas, it would spit the casing out, but not lock back. I couldn't get it to lock back, but whenever I fed two rounds in the mag, it wouldn't even pick up the second round without just cramming up and doing weird things. And it was all to do with being under gassed. I wanted to showcase it unsuppressed and then suppressed later, just so I showed both forms. 
that I had no choice but to add my suppressor, which added some more gas blowback to it. And it was too much gas blowback to where that allowed me to dial the gas back down a couple notches. And at the moment, don't wanna jinx anything, but I probably ran 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 rounds, 35 rounds with no hiccups in the current gas system setting, which is like the la second to last from wide open with this suppressor, which is not a flow through suppressor or anything like that. Now the gun's running happy. Onto the 6.5 Creedmoor. I don't have a suppressor for it at the moment. I wanted to showcase it as it is at the factory. And once again, um, I actually didn't even touch the gas system. I didn't want to mess with it. And it was having problems. So I'm like, okay, let's go through the procedure. I closed it off all the way. It wouldn't lock back. I kept opening it one click at a time. There's only five clicks to do. And at the moment, it is wide open, as open as I can get it. And what I have right now is a rifle that so far feeds every round, but it will not lock back. It needs just a little bit more gas thrown back in there. So this video is already going longer than I wanted to, but I felt like I had to tell you guys what's going on here. We did quite a bit of shooting for uh, five round groups with different ammo on both different calibers. So there's a lot of shooting today uh, so far before we even ex stretch the legs on these things. That being said, uh, just to be fair to the guns as well, some of this could have been shooter error. I felt pretty good about the shots today. It is very hot and windy. So we got the worst of both worlds right now. So if there's any human error here, it's probably maybe five to 10% maybe a little bit more, but uh, I think we got a pretty decent display of accuracy. Let's go ahead and start off with the 6.5 Creedmoor. Interestingly, I paired it with some AAC ammo and Sabre ammo, which if you guys didn't know, I think that's Palmetto State's like sub-brand or like a little sister company. This is AAC's 140 grain SMK. That ends up being just over one and three quarters. This says Sabre on it. It's black tip. Real quick con, for uh, this goes for both the Sabre line and the uh, Botel hollow point from AAC. This is uh, 65 Creedmoor ammo, and uh, one of them actually shot really, really well. The only thing about it is I can't find the ballistic coefficient. Uh, it says velocity, all this stuff, but I can't find what the BC is on both of these bullets. This one I can, because it's just a Sarah Mash King bullet, but I don't know what the BC is here, and I don't know what the BC is here. Uh, all right, going back in order here. The black tip, uh, whatever that is, uh, 140 grain. For this end to for this end, I would say it's probably these two right here. And we are at about one and three quarters yet again. That's 140 grain black tip from AAC. All right, now we go to AAC. This is the 140 grain Botol hollow point. Again, the only con I have about that is I don't know the BC if I want to stretch the legs on it. I'll have to kind of figure that out in time. But that is good to see. That is uh, sub them away. Right around three quarters of an inch is fair. Not bad. That's a good performer. I should mention at this point, I stopped shooting for a while. I gave it a break to cool down. Then when we resumed, Hornady Black, 140 grain Botel hollow point. This time around, uh, under one and a half. About one and a quarter, actually. One and a quarter. Not the end of the world. Without that flyer, that would have been pretty stellar, but we include it. Back, uh, still sticking with Hornady, 140 grain ELD match. Furthest end to furthest ends, right about there. That is about one inch right at one inch. This is the same, but 147 grain ELDM. That one stretched out a little bit more. Didn't like the 147, because that is just a tick over one and a quarter, just under one and a half inches. Okay, so best performer is three quarters of an inch, AAC, Botel hollow point, with the second being 140 grain uh, ELDM, both of them 140 grain. Uh, 0.75, one inch on the dot. All right, moving over to 308, there was only four different types of ammo to shoot. So uh, let's go ahead and go through those groups. Federal gold medal match, 168 grain, Sierra Match King bullet. For the center, for the sins are about there. You can tell we're talking about a larger diameter here. About one and a half MOA with the 168s. Now this is annoying. Um, the first shot was here and the rest started following this pattern. So it's a little hard to be conclusive about this, but this is the same, but 175 grain, federal gold medal match, Sierra Match King. And furthest into furthest in, that's annoying because that represents a one and a half MOA group, but the order is important. It went one, two, three, four, five, and it ended pretty good. So we'll still have to call it one and a half. Wink, wink, M118. I say it that way because Winchester, in my opinion, doesn't load it that well. 175 grain Sierra Match King, M118 clone, we'll call it. I've never had that shoot well. And this rifle's no exception. Yeah. Uh, two and a half. Yeah, that's on that ammo. That's pretty awful. Uh, PMC, x -Tech match, 168 grain. Is that the furthest end? If so, it's one and a quarter. Yeah, that's going to be the worst it gets. Okay, one and a quarter. MOA. 
And then I thought the 175 showed some potential as you saw, so I tried another group, and sure enough, the first one started bad, and then it followed a nice pattern. If we call it all together, it does it no service, about a one and a half once again. Yeah, okay, so there it is. I, I try to get the hero group, but there's no cherry picking. That's all the groups I shot, and uh, that's that. The 175 does seem like it shows potential. I just couldn't represent that too well. When we stretch the legs on them, I think I will be shooting uh, the 175 grain, but uh, we'll see. All right, guys, we're going to start off with the 6.5 Creedmoor at uh, 770 yards. Um, I was going to start closer, but just to get more out of the ammo, more money's worth, let's let them fly a little further. Start with 770. I don't think that's unreasonable for a 6.5 Creedmoor AR-10. Then uh, we'll push out uh, to 950 yards if we do okay here. And uh, I'm going to be using this. This is the AAC Sierra Match King 140 SMK. Um, and even though it wasn't the best performer on paper, it's still AAC branded stuff. This is a Palmetto, should work okay, and I have the most of it, so that's the way it's gonna be. All right, 770, bear with me when my first shots are off, but we'll try to get some quick corrections. Let's go ahead and start off with that tombstone shaped target on the left. Looks like it's high left. Bring it down a tenth. Ah, uh, snuck over to the left there. center. Off to the left. Ah, I try to hold a little to the right, get that last center punch. Good news is, a lot of hits in fast succession. And, oh shoot, I was about to praise it. Damn it, I was about to praise it. I thought it locked back. Nope. Damn it. What happened? I was about to praise it saying, look, it locked back in the last round, but no, instead it turned my 6.5 uh, Creedmoor into a six arc. Crap, still not happy with the gas system. One round left. Let's see if we could get locked back and a hit on the last round. You get one, but not the other. No lock back. Not enough gas, damn it. But hey, it's hitting. It only ruined one of the rounds. Decent accuracy at 770. Considering the wind, it's brutal. Brutal wind, as always, out here. Something about Lomita, Texas, baby. Just doesn't rest. Um, but 770 on a tombstone target, about yay big. That's a pretty small target, and I was shooting in fast succession. Let's let it cool down a little bit and push it to uh, 950 yards. That wind is cranking, to be fair here. Let's start off with the silhouette towards the middle there. Oh, not bad for a first shot over its right shoulder there. There we go, second round hit. That's not too bad. too much there. Bittersweet, man, because that accuracy is pretty good. The misses, I can tell, is the wind or it's me. The gas system right now is just not good. Oops. I meant to hit the mag release there. 
want to inspect that before we send it out there. All right, thankfully we didn't shoot that. That would have been weird. Crunched it down again. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's frustrating because what you guys are seeing, it's a pretty accurate gun. Um, I know it didn't totally represent that on paper. It did have two sub MOA groups, so that's cool. But I think over time and on a better day for me personally, we could have represented it better on accuracy, but this, this is a problem. I got it as wide open as it can get. And, and I, whenever I mess with anything else, it seemed like it was under gas. Like it just wouldn't spit the casing out. So this is wide open as it gets in case I'm wrong. I mean, let's mess with it some more. Let's, we clicked it one more, but I don't think that's the issue. Yeah, no, I mean, it needs all the gas it can freaking take. There's five positions and it's unhappy in every single one of them. And it's just not definitive clicks. Um, I know what could resolve this is just adding suppressor to it. Uh, so if that's your move, then go for it. But they seem under gas. None of the settings is giving it enough gas. Exact same problem as having with the 308. So I have no other option than to just shoot the 308 suppressed, which is not the worst day in the world. So let's go ahead and go to 308 with the suppressor. Swapped over to the 308 with the, uh, I don't know if I ever mentioned it, it's the AAC Titan QD suppressor. It's actually a 338 Lapua suppressor. Don't want to jinx anything, but so far with the suppressor on the gas setting it's on, it's been running okay. Let's just change it up. Let's go for that circle. Ah, all right. Not too bad, not too bad. Let's go ahead and just uh, stretch it over to 950. Let's go for the silhouette. Not too bad. I think we need to come down just a bit and to the left. Not too bad. Really nice recoil impulse, by the way, with the suppressor. I like the hit. I was just singing praises and you're going to do this. Come on, dude. What happened? Dented that casing pretty good. Don't tell me this is the beginning of the end. Come on now. I'm loving the accuracy. Come on. All right, she's running. Let's go for the uh, 10 inch Hello Wasp. All right, those uh, three circles to the left are 10 inch in uh, diameter. Let's go for the one to the right. That's a white target. 10 inch target at uh, 950. Let's give it a try here. Close. Low. Not bad. All right, the two circles underneath that are five inches. Let's try to go for the white one to the left. Oh, shoot. I thought that was the last round. Nope. Bent the casing on that one. We got one more round. 
that was really sluggish. Maybe now that it's uh, getting kind of dirty, it wants more gas. Let's try to add some. Let's see what that does. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I was really, really happy with the accuracy on both rifles, actually, considering the quick succession, crazy winds right now, too. Uh, but I'm shooting pretty fast, not really letting them cool down. And so accuracy wise, I'm pretty happy. But when I was slow pacing, trying to get everything zeroed off camera, uh, trying to get everything adjusted, there's just no gas setting that they're happy with. This one had a good run um, up until the end there. Out of the box, didn't touch them and they weren't running right so i'm like cool they're adjustable for a reason let's try to work it in close it all the way open it all the way in between there's only five clicks to do so i mean it's not like that takes that much t and e and neither of them are ever happy sample size of two one three away one six five creedmoor that's just how it goes i would have said it even if they were comped either way hope you guys know that so that's that otherwise positive notes here feels great when it runs especially suppressed unbelievable um Razor HD Gen 2, fantastic scope, uh, but also the Arkin SH4J, uh, really toe-to-toe -to -toe with it for not a lot of money. Very impressed with that optic. And again, that's $299 with coupon code TexasPlinking at checkout, so I'll be sure to put a link in the description for that. Hey guys, before I officially close out this video, um, I wanna make it a little bit more clear. Let's make this just kind of more so of a unintended series uh, where I'll update you guys uh, plenty. So real quick, it's only been two days since I shot the video, haven't shot them anymore getting ready to rip the accessories off of them and uh, ship them out to Palmetto State. But just a quick update, I went through the Palmetto State's uh, warranty process, which by the way, they have lifetime warranties on all their firearms. And so I uh, reached out to the warranty department, not that I would ever, but uh, I did it like anyone else. Not that I think I'm so special, but I didn't put, hey, this is Brandon at Texas Plinking. I bought these myself and going through the warranty process like uh, anyone else as well. Uh, so I'm not trying to use any Texas Plinking poll if there is any. And so far they reached out in about not even an hour after my initial claim. It said, give us seven days, but it only took an hour. And uh, they're trying to get me a return label. They just asked for uh, you know for me to confirm an address. So they're gonna send out the return label. So they're paying shipping both ways. We'll see how long the repair process goes and their overall diagnostics and all that kind of stuff. Uh, just interesting that both rifles had a very, very similar problem, but there's that. Uh, this could be a very good thing for everybody involved. I will say that though, right off the bat. And this kind of hurts being this honest, but I'm always gonna be honest because I really love Palmetto State Armory thoroughly. You guys will know that. That being said, I think this could be a good thing for me because I think I'm gonna get some functioning Saber 10s and not too long from now. It's gonna be a good thing for, for you guys because honesty is key, especially in this day and age of social media influencer crap. Um, so trying to keep it as transparent as possible. And I think it's gonna be a really good thing for, for Palmetto State if, and I believe they will get these things up and running because it's obviously if they never had an issue, that's ideal. But if they're gonna have an issue, it's all on their response. And if they ever had hiccups with the AKV nine millimeter or anything else in the past, they got on it quick and they did what they needed to do and, and they didn't hide anything. So that's why I actually really, really respect Palmetto State. I know everyone uh, loves the Gucci brands and all that stuff too, but I'm a PSA guy, I, I really am. So I didn't want that review to come off very, very negative. So I'm optimistic. I think this is gonna work out for everybody. And uh, I think the response is gonna be good because it's so far is good. I'm about to ship them out as soon as I get the return label. And so I'll keep you guys posted. I highly doubt this is gonna be a situation where I have problems with an AR-10. I make an honest video mentioning the problems that manufacturer then ask for that AR-10 back saying they'll look into it. And then they never send it back and instead send me a box of my accessories I had on the AR-10 further solidifying that I'm never gonna get my AR-10 back, the one that I had transferred in my name. Did that sound too specific like it's happened before? Anyway, I don't think that's gonna happen with PSA. I'm pretty optimistic here. But with that said, sorry for the negative review. It's not usually my style, but it's an honest one. And I think it's gonna be positive before too long. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll touch base soon.